Hey, and welcome back to the Hill and Valley YouTube channel. Thanks so much for checking out another video. This will be another one from our Building a Production Studio series. We had this idea to build out a little mini studio for product sets. In a previous episode, we showed you guys all about our psych wall, how we built it, why we built it. And when we designed it, we had a little bit of extra room behind the psych wall on both sides. So we kind of floated it all off into the middle of the room. And that created a little alley behind the psych wall on one side, which we knew we were going to use for storage. But the other side, we weren't so sure about. We figured it'd be nice to store equipment or potentially have another space for shooting. So that if people want to have privacy or work on something that involves no light coming in or no natural light, you can easily control all of that. This space is very useful for us because we don't always have to have something set up on our psych wall. Rather, behind there, we can always have something set up for product shoots like the backdrops and lighting already set up. Other side, I think it would be great if it was finished because we had talked about using that space behind the wall um, as like a mini studio for smaller product shots, things like that, just like tabletop setups. We've done a couple like how-to videos where it's just someone handling a product on a table. So that would be a nice little isolated space to be able to shoot in. So the process on this one was a little different. Um, when we first had Gage come in and build the psych wall, um, he had some ideas for what he wanted to do with this space. So we were kind of going back and forth on that, but then we ended up having him just leave it blank because he spent too much time on the psych wall. We said, you know what, we can handle this. So um, actually Rick did a lot of the work with making the space physically, Rick Angel. It took quite a while. It was kind of under-prioritized in our studio. Obviously the psych wall was our main priority and that took a couple of months. Once that was done, we were just excited to have the final product and we kind of left behind the psych to be you know, up in the air and we were trying to figure out what to do with that for the longest time. The first step was to put up some drywall so that the back of the psych was not exposed and potentially vulnerable to accidents or anything bumping into it. Um, our number one priority was making sure that the psych was safe and secure and that whatever we were doing behind the psych wall was not going to damage the wall itself. It's so one day after work, me, Adam and Rick stayed late to just get a bulk of that process done. None of us are contractors and we have little to no experience with drywall. So that was definitely a hassle. Rick was the one who sanded and plastered the drywall to make it uniform and smooth. Doing that kind of work when you're not in that kind of trade takes a long time, especially when you're trying to also run a business and work with other client work. So it took me a long time to really fine tune that area and get it to a spot where we wanted it to be. And luckily, Rick kind of stepped up and did a lot of the mudding and sanding, which is really the hard part. I kind of just slapped a bunch of the drywall in there and then he fixed a lot of the issues that we had or that I created. I gotta go hard for him try to buy a girl. Adam had gone back and forth with whether or not we should put a slat wall up or just finish the wall and paint it white. So ultimately we went with the slat wall. The shiplap, which was kind of more of just an aesthetic choice. We wanted it to feel a little bit different back there just because the studio is, you know, we're here every day and it can get a little mundane just doing the same thing all the time. So we wanted to have a little space that was slightly different. Below the slat wall, we also added an accented gray color. We finished drywalling and painting the outside of the wall and the inside of the wall as well. This made it look like the entrance to the back of the psych wall looked a lot more neat and clean. Is we wanted to have a space to store a lot of our products that we shoot because our lighting room was getting consumed by all of our overflow products. So we created some space up top where there's shelves now, a space that wasn't going to be used before, um, where the products can live and we can keep stuff. For when we're doing product shoots, it's less moving around the studio and everything's right there and readily accessible to you. Sometimes we have to hold on to products for upwards of six months to make sure we have all the shots we need of it. Another thing we did was added a curtain to the outside of the door so we could separate it from the rest of the studio. We had the space mostly cleaned up. We just had to turn it from a clean, empty space into a mini studio. So the first step for that was figuring out where we were gonna hang backdrops. We wanted a system so that we could have multiple backdrops set up all the time and quickly switch between them so that it was a quick and easy to use space. From our last studio, we still had these triple backdrop hooks that could hang three backdrops at a time that overlapped so that 
you could roll one up and roll the other one down without having to move them at all. So now that we had the backdrops set up, we wanted to come up with a way to either keep lights back there permanently or have a quick and easy setup for installing lights into whatever production setup we were gonna do back there. I knew I wanted those little lighting arm mounts so that lights could stay set up. I've always liked that idea of just having a space where you can walk in, turn on some lights, you know, maybe change out a backdrop or replace a lens, but just super simple and easy so that we can quickly and easily get product shots without having to spend an entire day on it. We did this to really utilize the space so that there weren't stands everywhere back there. Since it is a small space, we wanted to make sure we had the most amount of space available to us. I plotted out where exactly we wanted to put them so that we could pivot and raise and lower them to basically cover the entire space and have two lights placed wherever we need them to be. So after this long process of attempts and failures and complications, which it really should have been simpler than it was. Um, we finally got these two arms mounted to the wall and they felt really sturdy. Just as a precaution for the time being, we wanted to find a way to secure these wall-mounted light arms. For the time being, uh, we had all these leftover dog products from shoots we did last year. And so we have these six foot leather dog leashes. I can't believe I'm saying, I wrapped a dog leash around the crossbeam and hooked it to the, uh, the wall mount so that if anything happens, it'll at least be caught by something and be hanging from the overhead beam rather than falling straight to the ground. So although the process took a little longer than expected and we had some hiccups here and there, um, I'm really happy with how the space turned out. We have a permanent backdrop holder solution and we have two light arms that can extend, rotate, pivot up and down. And I'm pretty happy with all of that. I think as long as everything fits in there, the only other thing I'm considering we might want to do is put up like some more pegboard or some slat walls that make storing other things easy because the shelves are nice because they're really high up and out of the way, which is great for storing these products that we might not need for a long time. But sometimes it's nice to have things a little more accessible like lighting accessories or modifiers. Although this process took a lot longer than we wanted it to, and we faced a lot of challenges along the way, this is a very fun project and I'm always happy to customize our studio to best fit our needs. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to check out this video. We have a lot of other content planned based around the studio and also our production company. Please leave us a comment if there's anything you guys would like to see and be sure to subscribe to follow along with our channel.